everyone. Welcome to a huge Easter weekend and the latest champ.ie podcast. Very much a case of fairy house rules okay. There are no fairies in the houses of the three wise men, though, who are charged with finding you winners to pay for all those chocolate excesses that you will indulge in over the weekend. And of course, the next week, it's an entry. So some marvellous racing coming up. Let me introduce them to you in no particular order. They all would have scored against Luxembourg in the week. And they are trainer, and that's what he says on his hat, Tommy Coyle, uh, form guru, Mr. David Boland, and the legend from the Irish field, better known as uh, Ronan Groom. So they are the three, and all your complaints should be sent in their directions when all your money gets lost in the course of the week. A great weekend ahead, Fairy House, Saturday, Sunday, Monday this year, of course, to allow a gap before entry next week. It often has been Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And we'll end the programme by looking ahead to the Irish Grand National. But let's start on Saturday, gents, because um, not easy. You could lose all your money Saturday very easily. Two fiercely competitive handicap hurdles to start with. We're going to turn to the half three race, which is the INH stallion known as EBF novice handicap hurdle. Three miles, 14 flights of hurdles. And how on earth do you work this out when you've got a horse like Panda Bay, who is turning out having had just one run, and that was a winning run at, at the start of the month. So, who wants first innings on this? Let's start with Ronan. Yeah, you're right, Mike. It's very difficult. And I was just looking down at the last uh, seven winners of this race, or the last eight winners. Matthew Smith, Tom Gibney, Jared Fahey, Eddie, Fah- Eddie Harty, Brian Hamilton, uh, Pat Fahey and Mouse Morris. So it's not exactly a race that is won by the, the big stables as of yet. Uh, though, I guess, the ones that I wanted to concentrate on are two from the Denise Foster yard. I just think... Dumboyne and Volcano look like they could potentially be the best handicapped. Uh, Dumboyne won very well the last day and had that form franked significantly by a horse called Mercury Lane, who went out and won by 25 lengths on his next start at uh, Limerick. It was the meeting after Cheltenham. So I think he could be nicely handicapped off a mark of 130. And Volcano is more an angle of, I just think he could be crying out for this three-mile trip. I think he's... He was involved in that uh, city race at Navan that he should have basically won. Um, Brazos edged him out there uh, and uh, and kept the race in a Stewart's inquiry um, and won next time out at Ferry House and then fell very early in the Martin Pipe. It's interesting that they thought he was good enough to go for the Martin Pipe and he was sent off 15 to 2 there, which is always, it's always a huge betting race, the Martin Pipe, and the fact that he was well backed on the day uh, suggests to me that they, they probably do think he's well handicapped off a mark of 127. And I just think to step up to trip to this trip might suit. So a very hard race um, to really decipher, Mike, but those would be the two I'd be concentrating on. Davey. Um, yeah, it is very difficult. I like uh, the lad Ronan mentioned uh, for Cano. But I tell you, I go to the top of the weights. I know it wouldn't be easy carrying all that weight, but he's a very good seven pound claimer. Um and Harry Swan riding him. I think on Eagle's Wings is um, quite a good horse. I think he's better than a handicapper. Um, and he'll have to, sh- to to be that, to carry this sort of weight to beat the rest of them. But um, I was very impressed with his win the last day. And um, claiming seven off from 11-10, I like him. He, he, he has a little bit, he, he's plenty of experience under his belt. But I thought in Nace he was very impressive. I'd say he could be quite good. What are you going for, Tommy, here? Because... You know, we haven't mentioned things like anything Emmett Mullins runs. We, you immediately at the moment, you sort of you pick your ears up and he runs this sneaky getaway. Uh, where's the coil euro here? Um, just lucky enough, my computer is just after unfreezing. Um, I think sneaky getaway was probably a bit disappointing in Cheltenham. Um, I do like what Davy said on Eagle Wings. I was in Nace the last day and he, re- he was really gutsy in winning the, that the last day. Um, Velvet Elvis. He's um he's very he very easily matched with a few horses in this um the one that uh, Jordan Gainford rides as well is probably I think he's five pound better off or half a length um Ragnar Lodbrook of Denise Foster's as well um the one that my Euro might go on um she's promised so many times she's down the bottom of the handicap and Richie Deegan's taking a valuable five off her is Julie Stowaway 
uh, she ran well in the good three mile handicap in I think it was Leperstown the last day. She kind of flattened to deceive. I think Philip Enright rode her that day. She I think she only had a stamp on her back, but um, I think this probably just mightn't be as competitive. It's it's it is one grade down for her. So um, look if she gets her act together, she had great bumper form and. She, there is a big race like this in her, so I think maybe off that light weight, she could be worth that euro each way. Okay, let's move on to the 405. And if you're having a bet here, what's your bets? Because you've got Golden Jewel, Golden Spear, and Gold de Bois. I don't know whether any of those will strike gold. Look, um, the horse that I'm going to mention is Golden Jewel out of them three anyway. Look, he's a horse that I know very well from Eddie's. Um, you can't knock his form, really. He runs in all these big handicaps at Leperstown, Fairy House. He's always there and he's always knocking on the door. I know people probably have seen, oh, look, he hasn't won for three years now and this, but he's been very lucky sometimes in some of the runs. Last year in the Dublin Racing Festival, he was 11, jumped the last, couldn't get out. Um, the top weight and this, the, those days are gone. Chinned them on the line. The last day, I know he says he was fifth, but he didn't He didn't get any gaps when he needed them. He was... he. For, for a big handicap around Leperstown, he probably was a little bit further back than Chris wanted him. Um, and he's come home strong again, not beaten far. There is, like Julie Stoway, there is one of these pots. He he actually deserves one of these pots. He's been in graded races. He's been second in the uh, Down Royal Festival, Leperstown many times. And um, look, Eddie always targets Fairy House. It's our, our local track here as well. So um, I just see 10 to 1 up here, but... He, he definitely won't let you down. He 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 runs with his heart in his sleeve and uh, he'll definitely be there or thereabouts. He, he's that kind of horse that won't be out of the money. So I'm hoping he can go a couple of places better for Eddie and, and have a big weekend for, for Batterstone. Um, Ronan, uh, there's so many to, to, to think about here. Interesting that the jockey bookings for the Mullins squad as well. But you just don't know where to look, do you? Yeah, I, I suppose, Mike, a good place to start would be Eclair de Bofu, who's been put in favour here, I see, on the early prices, I guess. Uh, Jordan Gainford with the seven off there, fourth in the county, lower over hurdles than he is over fences. Um, and, of course, a distance winner as well. So he's a lot in his favour. I think punters naturally are going to move towards Jordan Gainford now. He just seems like good value for a seven pound. So you're... When you take that and you put it on a horse, the horse becomes a better handicapped animal as well. So I can see see the uh, the angle there. I, I I just think that with Fairy House, you always this meeting at Fairy House, you always have to look at the Cheltenham horses and wonder, is it too soon? Are they backing up too quick? And I think that that's a question even the trainers have to ask as well and, and will wonder themselves when they run and they're kind of taking a chance but the, the prize money is there that they have to go for it so with that in mind I, I, I like a horse here that hasn't run and comes in here fresh and that's for the all Conqueror and Henry de Bromhead team at Hurricane Cliff uh, just a lightly raced five year old but he won last time and Hugh Morgan's going to ride him here he's taking five pence off his back uh, he beat a horse called Kangaroo uh, Captain Kangaroo last time and Captain Kangaroo ran okay over at Cheltenham in the county hurdle and uh, he, he beat him comfortably enough, one kind of going away, and, and the pair of them pulled about 20 lengths here at the rest of the field. I just think he's improving at the right time. He only got five pounds for that, which is, isn't is a bad uh, rise at all. And, uh, you know, only four runs over hurdles, loads of scope to improve and coming off a clear career best. Um, and, and Hugh Morgan taking five pounds off his back. We saw how good he was uh, riding at Navin on Young Dev without any stirrups there for the, for the, for the whole race. So, um, he was the one who stuck out to me. And just another quick mention, Mike, to uh, uh, a horse who always runs well or used to always run well in these big races called Hearts of Trump, or Trumps. He'll be huge price, I'd say, on the day, but he often hits the crossbar in these races, finishes the likes second and third. He's been a bit out of form this season, but I'm pretty sure good ground is important to him. Um, and he's freshened up nicely after his, his run the last day as well, which came off off a bit of a break. So I could see him running well. I think he's run well at fair and at, at these in these big handicap hurdles at Fairy House before. And I think he could. I'm not sure he he's a horse who always often puts his head in front, but I could easily see him finishing second or third, and I could see him being forty to one on the day. So there might two against the field. Because it'd be nice to see Hugh Morgan not having to sing soprano on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Hope he's recovered from his injuries. Um, what about you, Davy? Um, I like uh, Eshke Lane in this. Uh, he didn't go to Cheltenham for whatever reason that was. I don't know. He was slightly disappointing 
or more than slightly. He was very disappointed in Leopard's Town at Dublin Racing Festival. But uh, he'd been knocking around uh, in good company before that. Um, and he, like I said, he was beaten a long way by uh, Drop the Anchor um, that, that won well that day. But I'd say this is a very good horse and um, he could be off a good mark. And um, I'll take a chance on him to maybe uh, get away from that last poor run. And he's had a bit of time uh, to come back from that. And I mentioned then for another horse that I'd like at a probably a big price. He had been well beaten as well by some of the better horses, but um, he'd been in good company up to that as a great bear. But um, I wouldn't be going mad on either of them, but they, they, either of those would be my pick in this race. Well, let's just look at the rest of Saturday. I, the Ferry House, I'd also mention the, the British Racing, which is not the, the strongest. The best card is the Haydock card, where it's the final of all the Challenger Series that have been going on. And there are seven finals. So there's a lot of money up for grabs. Um, anything caught anybody's eye? Um, I noticed that you didn't go for Golden Tom in that previous race at Ferry House, Mr. Coyle. What you Anything else caught your eye anywhere to, uh, as far as Saturday's concerned? Um, just on Saturday um, in Ferry House in the Mayor's Bumper, I'm going to give a mention to Brooklyn Glory again. I've talked about her before that we broke her and pre-trained her here and she's gone to Willie's. She probably, talking to the lads, she disappointed a little bit at the Dublin Racing Festival. She finished fourth, Barry O'Neill wrote her. She was probably a little bit keen. She didn't take, she was in the Cheltenham Bumper. She didn't take that and she she turns up here with Patrick Mullins. I know she's won, she's won her two bumpers on heavy ground um, but from all the words that we've been talking to Patrick and that he thinks she'd be a better mayor on better ground so we'll, we'll see now um, if she's no mudlack but um, it's good to see Patrick back on board Willie only runs one in it so um, she does have to turn the form around with Party Central from the last day but I think that's well within her grasp and she could be a good bet there in the mayor's bumper on Saturday How about you Debbie? Um, uh, there's nothing really that stands out in, in Haydock but in, in the first race in um, Ferry House, uh, there's a horse called Big Shanghai of Paul Nolan's. Now, if you were to watch back his run in Punchestown on that point-to-point bumper day, you'd say to yourself, Jeez, this lad must be gone mad because he was horribly keen. He was with Barry O'Neill, but um, he's a fine big horse and he jumps very well. Um, and I just think... You know, he was second in a point to point. I, I, I think he could just rule out what, what he did in the bumper that day, you know. Um, I think when, when he has a, a hurdle in front of him, you're going to see a lot better horse. Um, he has plenty of ability, and uh, I think he could be quite a big price, an each way price after his disappointing run in Punchestown. So uh, he'd be the one, he'd be the other one for me on Saturday. Fair enough. And what about the wonderful world of Mr. Ronan Groom? What else? He's going to have the pleasure of your support on Saturday. <laughs> I wouldn't say the pleasure, Mike, but uh, yeah, I, I, I'll give one a, a Haydock because the lads haven't really mentioned that. Uh, I think uh, DBC, I think it's pronounced, is a, is a horse that could go well at Haydock in the 240 there, the, the, the extended three mile and the furlong. Uh, for the skeletons. Time. For the skeletons, yeah. Second start, probably ran nice. First time up for them at Sandown. Uh, kind of lightly raced 10 year old. Um, and just looks like a, a, a potential improver now coming off a break last time as well when he finished second at Sandown um, and the cheek piece is back on again um, as well. So uh, I think he could go well. I think he's priced accordingly. And then just one more at Fairy House, um, Cavanagh's Corner. He, I, he, he um, denied me earlier on in the season. I was all over a horse called Brayside and uh, got up in the ladies race there to, to beat me and I think that's quite strong form and obviously around the track as well he didn't get very far last time at Limerick but in the ladies national there with Emma Toomey back back on I think think he could go well he's a 12 year old but he's been in the form of his life really this season so I could see him going very well as well okay um that's looking at Saturday Adox competitive but he is particularly strong, and Molly Carew for the Tom Scoo and Nama Holland might go well in the 350, I am told by those that know about these things. So that Saturday, of course, that is the first day of Fairy House. Two more days of Fairy House to come on Sunday and Monday. But first, let's hear from a trainer for whom this is a very big week. 
Uh, lots of interesting runners and who knows, possibly amongst them, a major player in next week's Grand National as well. We've caught up with Paul Nolan. Paul, all systems go for Monday in the Boyle Sports Irish Grand National at Fairy House with latest exhibition, carrying top weight and favourite. You must be very excited. Yeah, David, uh, um, listen, uh, the horse seems in very good form. Um, I, 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 I'm hoping that, that those, those good gaps between his races uh, will suit him. And uh, I couldn't be happier with the horse. Uh, Mike Dorn there, no one else rides him on him. And, he couldn't be happier either. So uh, I'm just hoping to God that we made the right decision and that's it. Um, up to three mile five now, but that shouldn't be an issue, Paul. He, st- he stays his races very well as he did in the Albert Barton over three mile and at Christmas he ran probably the race was life against Monkfish um, at Leopardstown. So you wouldn't be concerned about the trip at all? No, I wouldn't. I, 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 I think, you know, I, I, uh, I, I think it was a very good race in, in Leopardstown at Christmas. Uh, I don't think it was the same horse that appeared uh, in the Leperstown Festival meeting in, in February. Uh, he just wasn't the same and uh, wasn't near the performance. Uh, you know, Monkfish was unbelievable, but I, I don't think my horse was as good as he was at Christmas time. Um, and I think we have him back to where he was at Christmas now and he's fresh and well and i'm hoping to god that, that you know that he'll that the experience won't let, him, won't let him down uh over the first half mile of the race and would i be right in saying paul uh Chel- missing cheltenham it wasn't a case of that you were staying away from monkfish or anything the horse probably even though he was in good form he wasn't as well as he is now would, would, that, would that be right absolutely you know uh the race of christmas took an awful lot out of him and i'd say we even wanted to sort of a fortnight more uh, when the when the February meeting came. We just bought it just it just took him so long to to, 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 to to come right and and maybe the horses were under a little bit of a cloud at the same time as well. I, I, I you know we've we had we've had very few winners, but at the same time we've had a lot of seconds. Uh, and and I'm, I'm I'm just hoping he seems to be in a better place now, and I think that uh, he, he's just not a horse to. to pull out very quick out his races because he, he's hard on himself in a race he tries his best uh, touch what he remained to be as consistent as he has been he's never been out the first two in his life uh, and, 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 it's, and it's just fantastic that he's so consistent and I hope to God that, uh, that that'll remain the same we won't get too much into about crowds not being able to be there because obviously we all know it's a huge disappointment very sad for owners not to be able to be there but four very excited men four owners involved in this horse and um, I'm sure they'll be they'll be very excited sitting home on their sofa watching this on Monday uh, absolutely it doesn't take the excitement out of Davy. I mean I didn't go to Cheltenham and, and uh, I have to say that uh, I'd say if my temperature was taken or, or there was uh, your heart rate right. pulse was taken or any sort of machine hooked up to me I'd say there would have been a bit of steam out the back of it when myself and Catherine were here, where we were sitting now, uh, when the mayor was in Cheltenham. And uh, so I don't think it takes any of that. Even when you're at the race yourself for a race like this, I, 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 I'll be, I'll be the same out in the track there when I'll be on my own or a few with me. Uh, you know, I'll be, I'll be, uh, I'll be very tense for the first one, and, it, and it's stupid. It's actually stupid because it's a, you're hard on yourself, and but you're, if that's your constitution, that's the way it is, and. Uh, I'm not going to start paying the shrimp to come around with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared to bring enough money for me for me a bit of grub on the way home. No, I won't pay a shrimp. Try and stop me from dying. Um, and that's you, Paul. You always get nervous before these big days. But um, switching back to Miss Milner back in Cheltenham, like you said, the excitement here in the house and up in James's house and in Jim Coffey's house, I'm sure as well. But. Uh, what a mayor and what a performance. Absolutely. Like, I mean, I rang Jim there, you know, five minutes after she crossed the line and sure I could hear the excitement up in his house as well. And, uh, uh, you know, their, their whole family and extended family uh, were just all delighted. And I think, you know, that, that, that just it was just unfortunate, I suppose, with the lockdown the way it was that you couldn't be probably celebrated properly. But, um, you know, in in your in your in your heart in your mind, you would have celebrated it, and and, and that's what it's all about. And uh, you know, you, of course, for for 
Jim and his family, you'd, you'd be sorry that they weren't in Cheltenham to lead her in. Those are, those are, you know, you, you'd never forget that time, those memories, those pictures that you'd have on the wall of coming in with something because uh, very few people are able to experience it. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully to God we can get the owners of the yard here some, to spread the success a little bit more, that we're able to have a few more winners in it. Um, Jim, of course, is involved in latest exhibition and Paul, it's an exciting week ahead. Um, latest exhibition on Monday and next Saturday then um, over to Aintree um, with this Garama. Um, very exciting week ahead. Absolutely, you know, we're, 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 we're very hopeful. We'd have loved to got a run into this Garama. Uh, that wasn't possible. Uh, but we're hoping to God that, you know, there's, 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 uh, uh, he's performed very well any time he, he crossed the seas bar one that we were disappointed in him in 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 in, in Cheltenham and you know as uh, you know he's had a wind surgery since so really with those operations you don't know until you really go you can assess it at home all you want but until you're put uh, uh, under race course circumstances you, you you don't know what horse you're going to get back but uh, we're hoping that he seems in very good form if he wasn't we wouldn't go and uh, we were very happy with his work uh, in the last couple of days. And, you know, it's, 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 we're making the trip because we think we have a chance. And uh, hopefully he takes the defences. And uh, that's basically it, David. We jump him out there right into the room well. Like, he's not just no point riding him any other way. So, you know, we've tried different ways to ride this horse. And there is only one way to ride him. You have to jump him off and put him in his comfort zone and let him pass horses. And that's it. So, please, God, he can hit to a rhythm. And... Uh, We'll see what happens. Uh, horses in very good form, Paul. Lovely horse that won a couple of weeks ago, Coventry. Um, yesterday, the winner with Western Zara. So it's good to see the horses in good health and that they're running very well. Yeah, they're in good form. Uh, you know, uh, the, the little mare was, 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 well, she's not a little mare, but she was, you know, I thought uh, with her heart, probably she'd, she'd prefer uh, more testing conditions. She'd prefer, uh, you know, a, a, a level or track and she'd probably you know prefer a fence in front of her as well so the whole heap of things she could have preferred but um you know she you could say she was she was lucky but she wasn't stopping either uh and uh since she's a nice mare and i think she'd make a lovely stay and chase her david i think she's uh she's she's a nice pedigree she's by a good sire and she's a good attitude paul it's all about winners but most importantly this is why you get up early in the morning, you work every day of the year. It's about the big days, having the Cheltenham winners and having fancied runners and favourites in Irish nationals and English nationals. Yeah, you know, and it's uh, you know, it's amazing when you're sort of picking from a small pot and you but but and even though you know the we'll say the trainers are the, that have more of these horses in the bigger races, when you'd have only the couple it's still the same sort of pressure. It's just to spread across the board a little bit more when you've more of them. But when you're concentrating on the few in that way it's it's it, it still seems to to, you still seem to have the same pressure and uh, you're just hoping to God that they run respectable that's the whole thing in these big races that you go and you give the owners a run for their money and that's the main thing and I just hope that the, that the horses uh, perform to their ability and that things go right for them to get a bit of luck and that people are happy more so than not happy after the event well, Paul, very best of luck over the next 8 days at Ferry House and an entry Thanks a million, David So let's look at day two and three of Fairy House. Sunday's card features, of course, the underwriting Exchange Gold Cup at five o'clock and also the final of the Mayor's Novice Hurdle Series at uh, 3.20. And not easy to work any of these out on a card that also includes, of course, the Com Quinn Grade 2 Novice Hurdle and the George Murner Memorial Bumper. So... Um, it's almost a question of get your pins out, lads, isn't it? Let's start with this um, underwriting exchange gold cup. Always um, as good a race for novices as any that stays in Ireland throughout the year. Ronan? Yeah, it's it's a good race, uh, Mike, and we're going to see an Erd come in here, I presume. Um, it seems like his 
little injury before Cheltenham was was just a, a knock, and uh, he's going to be short price here, isn't he? Um, I mean, initially he ran over two and a half miles at Goran Park, and that's where he was really impressive. He won by eighteen lengths that day, and. The, I remember the uh, the time experts were were quite keen on them even then, and obviously when the Mullins made the decision to go down to two miles because he he jumped so well in Ergamin, um, and that looked vindicated obviously because he won well at Nace and then won really well at Leopardstown. But I don't see coming back to two and a half miles being a huge problem, and I actually think going right handed might suit him as well. Uh, I think he jumped that way just a tiny bit at Leopardstown. Uh, the good ground, the possibly quickening ground. Um, I look out the window here. I'm in Dublin, and it's 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 been lovely weather all week. So um, I don't know if it's yielding at the moment or calling, but I'm not sure if it's going to get any quicker by the time Sunday comes around. That might be a slight uh, worry for him, but uh, I could just see him having the class to deal with these. I mean, if you're looking around for for dangers, like Cedarwood Road is interesting. Tom probably knows a bit more about him, but he was quite a smart novice herder last season and, and got his got his act together over fences the last time. He'd be interesting uh, for Garode O'Loughlin. Um, and then you're looking at the, the Cheltenham horses. Uh, Andy Dufresne, you know, would be interesting as well. He's 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 always kind of uh, you know. Suggests he had the potential to, to be a grade one type horse. Couldn't live with Monkfish in the latest exhibition the last time, but still scope to improve. That was only his third start over fences and, and good ground could could be the key to him as well. But uh, an ergamine for me, I think he's I think he'll win. And what about you, Davy? A really good race to look forward to this. Yeah, it is. Um I I, I think it'll be quite easy for an ergamine. Um I agree with Rowan as well. The one I'd take if I was ha- to have a bet without an ergamine, I- I'd back Andy Dufresne. Um, latest exhibition will go to the national. So I don't see um, it's going to be too much of a task for an ergamine. Like Rowan mentioned, maybe the only thing could be ground. Trip's not an issue. Um, maybe ground and then you could take Andy Dufresne. Um, but an ergamine only had four days off, I'm told, um, after the knock. He was on the cur last week and work. So it was just the wrong four days, days wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, but he only missed four days and uh, he was on the cur last week. So there's obviously all systems go with him. Um, so yeah, I'd say it'd be easy work for him. But it, it, it's good, good to see him back out. And um, but I, I'd take maybe Andy Dufresne without him because obviously if latest exhibition doesn't declare um, eight to eleven, it's definitely going to be a lot shorter then on an argument, you know. Tom? Yeah, look, it's it's hard to um, get away from an Ergonim. Um, I, th- I think the step up and trip is going to help him with the ground. And I think Barry was harping on there to Davey that he won a good ground point to point in England there. So that shouldn't be no issue to him. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, um, Cedarwood Road is interesting. He was, an, he was a good novice hurdler. Um, their first day in Nace is jumping just didn't, wasn't up to scratch. He was much better. He was behind a big getaway in Leperstown and he'd done it and he'd done it in good fashion the last day in Gore and then um, Derek O'Connor rode him. Um, Garoad or Lachlan only has a few horses but does very well with his horses for Chris Jones. Um, he's definitely a trainer to keep an eye on and um, that we already know but um, this lad definitely, uh, he has high host, he has high prospects for this lad so um, I definitely wouldn't, I'd definitely be putting him in, into an each way kind of category as well. Um, yeah, as the boys say, Scarlet and Dove could be interesting. I know she won the last day in Limerick, but getting the seven pounds, she's rated 140. She wouldn't have to improve a whole lot to be in the mix for a place either. But, um, yeah, look, it, it'll be interesting. It, it's hard to know when we haven't got decks in front of us. This could really break up as well. Like Franco de Port, I couldn't really see him maybe going there if the steering for long. So, look, um, if, if all the vibes are good, um, he's going to be hard bet here, yeah. And let's see it was Sunday before we move on. I'll ask you lads just to keep this one brief because I want to have plenty of time to talk about the Irish National. This um, Mayor's Novice Hurdle Grade 1. Fascinating that um, Denise Foster, Gordon Elliott Yard, the, the Sliding Rocks, their only entry in this, whereas the customary battalion are entered by uh, Clus Sutton uh, and trying to work out what the best of them is is very difficult. Um, Tommy, have first innings on this one. 
Yeah, as I said, it's going to be hard to know, but one that's really interesting, if it does run for me, is Royal Illusion. Um, won very nicely the last day in Leopardstown. Um, we all know, it's I think he's right, 95 in the flash. Ronald Tammy, he did win a big handicap, did he? Up the car with um, it a big gamble. I think Joey Sheridan wrote him that day. Look, she's no mug. Um, she she's a real interest. She 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 cruised around the last day and won won as she likes. So there could be plenty more improvement over hurdles with her. I know she's a nine year old, but um, she's only had the two runs over hurdles. But um, if she goes here and you see P Town and put up on it, she's the one for me. Moving on to uh, Ronan, um. As I said, trying to work out what's going to run here, but it's got Mullins written all over it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And and Tom's made the case for um, for Royal Illusion well there, and it is all about jockey bookings when when they do come true. But Echoes and Rain would be another very obvious one to run here as well for for Willie Mullins. Uh, she she has significantly better form for for beating eight lengths uh, Belfast Banter last time in a Grade Two at Nace. We all know what Belfast Banter went on to do at Cheltenham. So I think that as her as the form choice here and, and maybe Royal Illusion is the potential choice because she was very good on the flat and, and good ground for her would be significant. I just want to quickly mention uh, Santa Rosa, Mike. Um, she was a really good mayor and bumpers, uh, you know, a real kind of Twitter horse as well. A lot of people seem to, to, to follow her and been off the track for two quite lengthy kind of segments one normal one and one she was she only ran once last season and then came back after 400 days and, and won really well at Nav and like, she didn't beat much that day because Manito Park the Mullins mayor was disappointing in the end but she pulled really hard for Robbie Power the whole way around and I just thought she won quite smooth given that she was her first run in 400 days and you just watched the start of the race she was pulling the whole way around um, I think she's pretty talented, so um, I could see her run a big race. She'd definitely be an interesting runner, and I like the decision to just skip Cheltenham and come here instead uh, under the fresh angle. Um, so Santa Rosa would be the most interesting one there for me. Like. Fascinated by this Atlantic Fairy. You can't have Fairy winning at Fairy House, can you? <laughs> um, but then, then again, it was an impressive win at Navin last time. Davey, um, some words from you on this one? Uh, I actually don't need to say much because Ronan said it for me. Um, I'm a big Santa Rosa fan. Um, a good mate of mine, Darren McLaughlin, as well, trains her. Uh, yeah, just back up. I'm not going to repeat what Ronan said. The bumper form is, is very, very good. Um, I know they were disappointed um, when she was turds, but um, obviously the Conways are known for like to change their jockeys around in time. So obviously Puppy now is is, is the new man to, to ride in the in the in the pink and white colours. But um yeah, I like her. I think she she she's a very good mare and um I think she's only going to keep progressing over hurdles. And anything or anybody's eye in the two grade twos or anything else on the Sunday that you've been saving those um, coupons for um Davy first of all uh I won't lie to you. No, no there's there's um... fine let's move on then. Uh, I love it when Davy's a man a few words. I normally get two of them. Uh, Tommy? Yeah, I actually haven't gone through it either. Um, when you haven't got decks, I don't really go through it, Mike, so I'm stuck There's on only that. 75 entries for the opening race. Come on, lads. <laughs> uh, any from you, Ronan? Yeah, uh, just a quick mention for uh, the, another big, big Twitter horse, Fly Smart, has been entered in the first uh, for, for William Mullins. He might have a couple of other entries coming up soon as well. Very interesting to see that that uh, he might be out soon. He's obviously had a couple of setbacks, but it's been a huge talking horse since he came in from uh, from France without running yet. I think he was he could have been favoured for the last two Supremes or at least this one or in the betting right at the start of the season. That type of uh, hype has been around him, and it's very interesting to see if Ronan McNally runs the real deal in in the Grey Two. Huge fan of. Uh, what what McNally has achieved this season, I've done a few pieces with him. He's absolute gent to do with, uh, and I think the real deal is is the. It's been in many ways the talking horse of the whole season. What what, what the, the the rate of improvement he's 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 been able to put together. So uh, it'd be interesting to see if he goes for that grade to the uh, the two mile race. Yeah, the real deal. They end after you, I think, running, didn't they? Anyway, let's move on to Monday. Let's move on to. The Boss Sports Irish Grand National, five o'clock. This is the race which sadly we'll, we'll realise that without a crowd, what a difference it is. You won't have 
uh, the Taoiseach. I'm sure getting a thoroughly warm and uh, positive welcome from a packed Ferry House crowd and the Mounted Police and all that, which is is, is a shame because it's all part of the spectacle. Um, and obviously we are waiting the final field and, and, and that in itself presents a problem because um, it's going to hang on first and foremost whether Tiger Roll does or doesn't take his chance. If he doesn't take his chance and waits for the bowl at Aintree, then ladies' exhibitions currently second top weight. It's going to be top weight, and the weights are going to go up. And there's quite a few in here as well that are also in the Aintree National. So um, who's been sitting close to a crystal ball? Davey, have first innings on this one. Um, I have a very biased opinion on this, Mike, but um, I'm going to go with latest exhibition. Um, he's, I'm a big fan of always uh, grade one or graded horses in handicaps, and that's what this lad is. He's just been very unfortunate to run into an exceptionally good horse in Monkfish um, from Cheltenham last season in the uh, uh the Alba Bartlett um, and then in two grade one chases over three mile and back to two five. Um, the, the, this was mentioned after Monkfish beat him in um, Leopardstown in Dublin Racing Festival by James and Paul. We were on the way home from Leopardstown to Treviston. James mentioned about it, said, you know, if his handicap doesn't change of one five three, he could be ideal for the national. So this isn't just something to run away from Envoy Allen or run away from Energamine. This has been in the lad's head for quite some time now. Um, and people always think, oh, you know, why didn't they go and take on Monkfish? Were they afraid of him? The, he, he was 100%. He, he was in good form now, but he wasn't 100%. So they weren't overly happy in going to Cheltenham anyway. Um, so they were happy to wait. Um, I've seen him twice this week. Horse looks exceptionally well. Uh, three mile five is ideal. Uh, the drying ground is good for him. Um, you need a lot of luck, obviously, early on, but um, he just reminds me of a sort of horse that um, our Duke won this, actually won it off the same rating, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I remember correctly. Um, you know, I just think if Brian, Brian Cooper is such a good rider as well, just ride him patiently, start it off with, hopefully get the, the screws out of the way early on over the first few fences, get him into a rhythm, uh, trip, ground, Everything's ideal for him, and he's a class above all these. Uh, I hope Tiger Roll, not because I think he'd get in latest exhibitions way or anything, but I'd like to see him go to Aintree. I think that's his best chance of winning a grade one over fences. Um, I think, obviously, Aintree suits him, but those fences in the UK definitely suit him better than here. Um, last time he ran over um, Irish fences, I'd say it's quite a long time ago. And a big shout-out to Jamie Codd if he does the weight on the big dog for Peter Fatty could be the lowest way he'll have done in donkey's years but um latest exhibition for me on a with my heart and on my sleeve i think i i, I think he's the one because you can always picture the scene can't you jamie cod sitting at home on friday morning uh waiting for the decks with the chinese takeaway menu in one hand and trying to decide whether he can order more than just a plate of noodles <laughs> um tiger roll of course it will be over the park fences if he does go to entry um Tommy, what's the, the, the thinking amongst the trainers here? I mean, I'm looking at these and I'm thinking any one of it, Joseph O'Brien's got a real chance. Obviously, Willie, no mead. You know, yeah. We'll run through you think of it. For, for the race as a spectacle, I, I like to see Tiger O run, you know, in an Irish national. And maybe Keith, local lad, lives in Munchaukland. He live, grew up around Fairy House to get the ride on him and have a chance like, to win an Irish national like that on a horse that he's worldwide known and but it'd be a great coup for Fairy House and the race itself if he ran. Um look he's gonna I think for even for ladies. Would he ride him though Tom? There is strong like, suspicions well, I heard this week they might claim off him from what I was hearing. I, I think that'd be very harsh if they, like Keith has the association with him, you know Keith is He's such a hard worker down in Gordons to keep the weight like that. Do you know, I, I like, I love to see him on him, to be honest. Um, he does have a connection with the horse. Um, I think for latest exhibition as well, to keep the weights down, he, I'm sure the Nolans would be much happier carrying 10, 13 around than having to lump 11, 10. Um, so it is. Um, the big dog for me, yeah, he won the the trial well, but that was soft ground. This is a different kettle of fish because um, 
as, as Ronan was saying, I only live across the road from the track. Um, it, it's been very dry here for the last few days. Um, Coco Beach and Run Wild Fred. I, I'll probably leave Run Wild Fred for uh, Ronan because I think him and Andrew Blair White are, have been screaming about this horse for a while. So they're, they're closely matched. Um, I'm just going to go down the field. Um, two horses that I, I fancy each way and they ran against each other the last day is Home by the Lee of Joseph O'Brien's and the horse that he bet that day enjoyed Allen. Um, Connor Orr rides out for me on a Thursday and uh, he was chatting this morning. He, he, he never shut up about it, actually, to be honest, all the morning. He can't wait to ride it. Um, he's got 10-2 at the minute. He'll take three off him. Um, he says he's crying out for this, this kind of marathon distance. He's only a seven-year-old. He's a novice with that weight, but he jumps well, he says, and he wants to stay. Um, it was too short for him. He said he tried to get him racing the last day, coming across the side in Nace, and he just couldn't. He wasn't quick enough to get going. That was two and a half mile. Um, but uh, he, he, he's, a right, he's a right chance for, I think he's 25 or 33 to one. But you can take that home by the Lee as well. I think he's been aimed at this race. So them two are going to be there, thereabouts. But um, it's a good race. I hope all the big horses stay in it. And um, we'll have something to look forward to on Monday, even if we have to watch it at home. Yeah, you mentioned home by the Lee. Ronan, I mean, it's fascinating. This other horse of Joseph's appears to have been well back, namely this um, Sempo. Um, I'm waiting to see how many chickens town actually roll out here. Um, but is it all down to what Tiger Roll does, do you think? Yeah, it does, because he, he does change the complexion of the whole race. One, by being in it, he, he's, you know, he's coming off his, uh, his win at Cheltenham where he looked as good as ever. But if he doesn't run, then it's huge as well because the latest exhibition and we'll, we'll obviously move right up the weights and, and it just changes that whole thing as well. I, I think if Tiger Roll won, runs, the latest exhibition will be clear favourite. I think his, his profile is so good for an Irish Grand National. I think when you look down the winners in recent seasons, you look at the novices, lightly raced and and as Davey mentioned he's off the exact same mark as our Duke and there was no monkfish around when our Duke was running in, in grade one novice uh, chases that season um, and I think the latest exhibition coming up and trip quick ground you know I, I and I love the decision to run here instead of the, the Gold Cup I just think that makes a lot more sense you could run to 160 and still get beaten by an ergamine but if he runs to 160 here over this sort of trip I think he'll, he'll take all the bean. Um, I was a bit surprised to see um, Espanito Bello was was quite still long in the betting. I, I thought he had a lovely profile for the race as well uh, compared to the likes of... He's right in there with the likes of Coco Beach and Run Wild Fred. Uh, and he's an interesting one for, for Barry Connell as well. Um, you know, obviously in his first season with a trainer's license, uh, obviously an owner, owner before and a jockey before as well who's put a lot of money into the game. Um, beat uh, Coco Peach by 18 lengths back at Nace in December and got turned over then back in the in the Webster Cup at Navin but um, I think I'm pretty sure this looks like it's been the plan all season and he's just another seven year old novice and that's the type of profile you need for this race you look at the, the previous winners like Saburro, St. Ardrick uh, Shut the Front Door Thunder and Roses I'm pretty sure was a, a novice as well when he, when he won it Um that's what kind of makes sense. I think it's an excellent, excellent race, Mike. Um, and just one more to mention quickly, uh, Augusta Gold um, is a horse that I like and a mare now running with Willie Mullins, which is really interesting. Obviously used to be trained by, by Mag Mullins, uh, change of ownership, moved to the Mullins yard. I'm not suggesting that that's a huge, you know, all of a sudden this mare is going to find serious amount of improvement because Max Mullins is a, a, obviously a very capable trainer himself. I just think it's an interesting switch. And he's, she's got good course form. I think this sort of trip will actually suit her. And uh, I can see her running a big race as well. But really looking forward to it. Obviously, Salve can't go. But uh, latest, in short, I think latest exhibition would be the best right now. Yeah, you mentioned Augusta Gold. I mean, whether Danny will keep the ride or whether that Mr. Townend's got his eyes on it is another part of this extraordinary uh, equation. Of course, off you go. It was a big landed the big handicap at, at Leperstown uh, before Charles Burns uh, and uh, Robbie Burns now um, has charged that. There are so many that you can sort of bring to the boil here. 
Um, but it does so much depend, doesn't it, on Tiger Roll. So fascinating race on the Monday. Anything else on the Monday at this early stage? I mean, it really, it, it's, a, it, it's a bit like a, what happens at Aintree. It's a long day before you get to the National. But is there anything else that's been laid out for the last day? Anybody got word of anything they'd like to, to share with your adoring thousands of fans, you wonderful uh, threesome? Any, anything got anything going? Uh, Wait, any, just... Anything that will pay for the excesses of the summer when we finally get a summer? One, one in the handicap in the 315 for me, the top weight. I like the way you're... I was you're just about to say that, Tom. Yeah, well... Yes, I like you're... the way you're thinking, the pair of you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, we all know Gavin's horses have definitely turned a corner from the Cheltenham and even I think he had a winner again tonight. This horse is a is a is a high class horse. He just hasn't hit the form this season. And I don't think look, it, if if he if he is good and he puts his mind to it, he, he probably is still well handicapped off 135. He could be interesting there in the 315. And I actually also would mention French dynamite as well in the 350 test the flooring porter form with some interest. Anybody got anything else to say for themselves before I turn to naps and next bests? Speak now or else hereafter, et cetera, et cetera. By the way, we send our, our best wishes to Barry Doyle. He's uh, spending a bit more time with his packing cases. He's only gone um, on a while. I wanted him to take the mother-in-law away for a week, but he declined that invitation. Um, so if in the absence of anybody got anything else to say, let's go around the the experts now get your pens out, everybody, and you write these down and you remember who tipped what. And the day of reckoning will come one day. David Bowler, nap the next best, please. Um, my nap is latest exhibition to win the Irish National. And my next best is Santa Rosa in the Mayor's Hurdle and um, Big Shanghai on Saturday at a big price each way in uh, the Maiden Hurdle. So from big, big, and try again, from Big Shanghai to Big Tommy Coyle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to nap um, Golden Jewel. I don't think this is as good a race as he's ran the last few, um, and he deserves one. Um, not just that he deserves one, but he's a good horse, and he is going to bag one of these big ones, and I hope it's this weekend. And my next best, I'm gonna st I'm gonna go each way on Connor in the national. Enjoyed Alan there at thirty three to one. Um, I'm sure by the sports and them, you'll get five or six places. So um, he says he'll keep galloping and he jumps well. So that's what you want for a national. Hopefully Tiger Old stays in and he'll have the lightweight. So enjoyed Alan each way. And we've saved the best till last. Or at least that's what this says here. No pressure. His name is Ronan Groon. That's R-O-N-A-N. And he will now give you a winner and the next best. Uh, nap. Uh, going for uh, Hurricane Cliff and the 405, the big uh, handicap hurdle on Saturday. And next best, I think Santa Rosa is 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 in a quite an attractive price in the big mayor's race on Sunday. And I'll give mine just to make sure that everybody has a good laugh to end with. Um, one o'clock Haydock, sexy lot. <laughs> Won't need to be a world beater to win that on Saturday. And also, Fairy House and that 440, that bumper. I'm going to upset one of you three uh, because I'm going down to the bottom. I think Derek O'Connor on a Gavin Cromwell JP Limerick Lace getting a stone from Patrick Mullins might just upset the proverbial apple cart. She, she was very so bet last day. Oh, that. yeah. You don't, you're agreeing with me, are you? She she was very impressive in the point of point bumper and punch out. She she visually looked good, so you could be onto something there, Mike. As long as I'm onto something, I'm onto otherwise that I'm under explaining it to the mother in law if it goes wrong. Thank you very much indeed to everybody. I hope you've enjoyed the program. Hope you have a terrific uh, weekend and some wonderful racing at Fairy House next week. I think you'll send us to me again in this chair, but the slide is it won't be this chair because I shall be at Aintree and it'll be all about 40 runners and 30 fences, uh, two chairs, a beaches and various other things. And that's not a drinks order either. But thank you to Tommy Coyle, to David Bolan and to Ronan Groom. And uh, also next week, you'll be delighted to hear that the Doyle will return from all of us this week. Thanks for watching and from the champ.ie podcast. 
a very good night to you.